Here it is. Welcome, everyone. I'm going to assume it's a beautiful day, but I haven't been out there yet. <laughs> it is, man. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous, sunshiny day. It's all At relative. least it is here in Overland Park, Kansas. It is uh, amazing as we start off the month of November. Hard to believe, November 1st, 2022, the best month of the year. Welcome on board, everybody. This is the Crushing Iron Podcast, episode 630. It is, man. 630. What's the uh, what's the number that aligns with that? I can't think of anything. Every once yeah, in a while, I got I got nothing for six thirty. It's just we've been doing this for a while. That's all we got. To know. And before we get in the intro, I didn't even ask you this before our, on our in our pre show meeting. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you get Did you get any trick or treaters last night? Uh, I think we had two. Yeah, <laughs> two <laughs> outstanding. We, yeah, it's just not the same, man. Um, we did see a guy and his his uh, son walking by in costume while we were. I think eating dinner and they didn't even like walk up to our house. <laughs> it was really weird. Oh my gosh. How, I mean, Halloween is generally one of my least favorite holidays. I mean, it's, <laughs> but it does prelude the greatest holiday, which is Thanksgiving. Um, but we, you know, and for all the parents out there, how many times last night did you yell out? Did you say thank you? You probably yelled it out 100. I know I yelled it out like 500 times or Use the sidewalk. Don't walk through the grass. Don't touch that. And like, they don't even listen. Like, all they want to do is like pimp out candy. And this, the neighborhood we live in, they take Halloween very seriously. I figured talking, they would. Oh, dude, we pulled up to this house we that we were uh, one of Hayden's hockey buddies, and we pull up to the house. And they've been they've been here for three years, and. Their parents are in town. They got their Phillies jerseys on because they're from Philly. Her dad's like a um, – he's an NFL cameraman. Been an NFL cameraman for like 30 years. They're in town for the Titans-Chiefs game on Monday night. But anyway, they're sitting back there, and they got this whole fold-out table with f- at least 400 full-size candy bars, three Musketeers, M&Ms, Hershey bars, Reese's, Twix, um, you name it. I mean, Starburst. I mean, like – I was like, you. I mean, like we we. I bought like six giant bags from Costco, dumped them out in the in the driveway. But it was like a whole production. It yeah. was really unreal. But I mean, Fifth Avenue's. Not, what what's, what's your, that? I Fifth. didn't see any Fifth Avenues, but it, that didn't surprise me. I mean, that's kind of like you know the yeah, it's like it, high it's, end. That's a delicacy, really. It's it not, is. It's not a de- it's a it's a delicacy. You don't see many Fifth Avenues anymore. You don't see many Rolos, uh, which is another classic. You know, you just no one's handing out caramels, which I know is one of your favorites. Um, yeah, it's just it, it's it's all the mainstream. It's all the mainstream brands that get all the love. Um, and apparently, we, I was talking to my neighbor this morning. Some dude down the street was handing out one pound bags of Sour Patch Kids. Well, I'm like, yeah, you don't have kids, obviously, because. I mean, and if you think about it, what really happens is in a big neighborhood, you don't give away candy. You all buy candy and then you just mix it up between the houses <laughs> because right. your kids go out and they bring all the candy back unbagged and unsorted and then you just resort them and you get back the exact same thing you started with. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was good. It was perfect weather for, listen, for, for basically November in the Midwest, it was like 70 degrees yesterday and, and perfect weather. So it, it was awesome. And it's another perfect day here. It's, again, it's hard to believe it's November. Uh, if it's your first time tuning in, welcome. We appreciate you giving us your time. We know you have quite a lot of options in the triathlon podcast universe and just podcasts in general. Your time is very valuable. So we appreciate you tuning in today. Uh, we cover it all. We do swim, bike, and run specific podcasts. We do race recaps and also race previews. Uh, but for the most part, Mike and I as coaches, athletes, best friends, We just sit back, relax, have an open, honest discussion about what we're going through in life, not just as uh, human beings on this planet, but also as coaches and athletes ourselves. Now, we also talk a lot about what our own athletes are going through. Mike and I work with a wide range of athletes all across the globe from beginner level athletes looking at the very first sprint or even a 5K all the way up through elite level amateurs uh, trying to get back to Kona and everyone in between and from all over the world. Uh, we'll use the feedback loop we have with them via training peaks, emails, text messages, uh, and the like to drive the discussion of the day. 
We also utilize our uh, very uh, popular Facebook group. You can search that, Crushing Iron Group. Answer one simple question, we'll let you right in. Great community, awesome people, and an outstanding resource uh, in a uh, sport that is oftentimes confusing and conflicting uh, with its information. Uh, it is a, It really is an outstanding community of just really solid people who have been around the block many a time. And uh, be, be a part of that community. Don't be a lurker, but, but participate uh, and get some good feedback and, and avoid some of the pitfalls we've all had uh, in our triathlon journey. We'll go in there about once a month and do a little bit of a QA and a and take the pulse of the community and let that drive uh, the podcast itself. Uh, but that's it. We don't do sponsors. We don't do ads. But we do have one agenda, and that's to keep you happy and healthy in your endurance sports journey. Yeah. And uh... – we're giving more ways to be happy and healthy here. We are giving it out more there. ways. We, yeah, we did. We we we've been talking about it, and it's kind of like the most the most addish thing we've ever done. Even if addish isn't a word, uh, so we we uh, we did launch our t- uh, 2023 training plans. They're on our website. That's c 26 triathloncom uh, All the info you need to do is on that. You get an eight week prep plan, twenty week uh, training plan, access to group Zoom calls, Facebook page, uh, the online hub. It's got you know, honestly, hundreds of hours of, of previous Zoom calls we've done with our team, but also instructional videos. Uh, it's a great deal and a great package uh, for all levels, for beginners uh, all the way up through uh, seasoned veterans and accomplished athletes. Uh, and again, we've got three 70.3 plans, three Ironman plans. And then below those, we have uh, the uh, races that would uh, also be very, um, very similar to the layout we have in those. So those are on sale now. Uh, they are limited quantity just for the mere fact that we are doing Zoom calls. And when we do them, I want to be able to answer everyone's questions along the way. So, again, go to our website, uh, c26triathlon.com. You can see them on the homepage, but you can also click on the training plans tab, purchase them right there, and then be delivered through uh, Training Peak. So uh, check that out. And if you have any questions about them, uh, email summerc26operations at gmail.com. Yeah. And I, I just think it's kind of cool because, I mean, especially if people have been listening to the podcast for a long time and you know how it goes, you go out and – decide you want to buy a training plan and how do you know what's behind it? And basically these plans are built on the philosophies that we talk about every week. And so there you have it. I think it's kind of a cool thing. It's, it's really kind of fun to be able to put that out there and um, make it available in for these certain courses that we know really well. And um, they're basically designed for those courses and those styles of courses and everything like that. So you can go out and, really kind of dial it in to the specific race you're doing. And I mean, it's a, you know, like you're talking about Wisconsin, it's, you got a two month prep and then, or Chattanooga two month prep. And and you got, what is that? It's like, it's not 20 weeks. It's like, no, he has more than that. I mean, it honestly, it really is. I mean, we've, we've had requests to do this for a long time, but it is, especially if you listen to this podcast since, you know, regardless of how long a year or six months, like, you know, it's that, you know, the philosophy you're getting, but it's, it's also, you know, interaction and, and, you know, with the zoom calls and being able to ask questions, can, kind of getting some further explanations, you know, with things, but they're all, it's, it's the groundwork and the framework that we've used in every race that we've got on there. We've had first time finishers and athletes on the podium and everyone in between. So it's the same, the same outline, uh, you know, and specific to these race courses. So uh, it is, it's a great thing to utilize and, and an awesome, I think, opportunity for the self-coached athlete who's, you know, wants to learn more about maybe coaching themselves or what coaching is like to, to be a part of the the educational piece, which is the online hub and the Zoom calls to learn more things, uh, maybe see uh, a way, see the see a different way things are, are delivered because, listen, the sport's not going anywhere. Um, you know, we, we got a title for today, but, you know, we'd be remiss if not talking about the 70.3 Ironman World Championships this past weekend. Um, I got to tell you, man, you know, the, the, about a year and a half ago, right before COVID and in, during 2020, 2021 people thought you know triathlon was 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 hurting man i i don't know that since i've been in the sport that it's been in a better place um it was really amazing to watch the the two-day format again i think is a i think is a win you know i think there's some things to be uh you know they can be fine-tuned just like everything there's always something that can can go better but first things first st george deserves to have a race there or a championship event there every year of some sort. It is an unreal location. I mean, whether you were watching it, you know, from televised and watching like the, the swim start and, and the scenery, 
it's like a different planet. I mean, it really is amazing. And I had a bunch of athletes like send me pictures of like the start. And it's like, and they said it was one athlete this morning was kind of giving their feedback. And they said, you know, outside of the race, I'll remember this sunrise for the rest of my life because oh. it was that unreal. Um, it, and, and here's the thing. And we, we talked about this a ton with, with races that, that get extended, you know, in, in cities and, and towns that really, really embrace these races. Um, that is one of them. They have a a statue, monument, whatever you want, a sculpture of an Ironman World Championship. In it's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. It's there, planted, and they just love it. They love it. There was, I saw a clip of like one of the local St. George people asking the pros after the race what they could do better. Do we need to put lights on the buoys for the swim course because it's so dark? Like, no, no one does that. They're like, hey, how can we hurry you up out of this town um, and get back to normal life? They embrace it. Um, and so, I, again, like, it is an amazing place. Anyone who's ever gone there that I know that's raced it has nothing negative to say. Amazing venue, amazing place. To, again, sightsee, uh, preferably after, uh, <laughs> before, after you race, um, but an amazing place. And the venues are great. You had Taylor Nib again. An American, our females are, are are two for two. You got um, American champions in the full distance with Chelsea Starro, and then you got Taylor Nib, the the young. I don't want to call her up and comer because she's not. She's but she's twenty four. Uh, she took the the women's title uh, in just an unreal show of dominance on the bike that just like destroyed the field, um, which I, I I did predict. Um, and then you had Blumenfeld just being Blumenfeld, uh, after, you know, for him, a, a third place disappointing finish at Kona, he came <clears> in and you know, we talked about it last week. I, I wasn't sure he was going to have the, the, the legs and the pounding and, and, you know, I don't think the course suits him as, as good as it does Eden, even though he won, you know, the, the full there, you know, quote unquote, 2021 championship. And in May, I, I think the course suits Eden well. And he proved that last year when he won the race, but what I didn't kind of take into account and I should have now looking back on is his frame I think is a lot better suited for absorbing that kind of a load back to back to back he's 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 not fat he's he's not overweight he's short and he's just stocky he's just and he's built like a like a freight train and and you saw him use that I mean he he, he his bike he biked away from everybody and then ran with Canute for but 11 and a half miles, something like that. And I think Eden dropped out after the first lap. Um, it was just amazing watching. And then again, for, for, you know, we're an American podcast. So I got to give, I got to give props to American. You got Ben Canute, you know, a dad, you know, which again, and we'll talk about some of this in a minute as we talk about the topic of the day, but you got Ben Canute, who's married, who's got kids, you know, coming within a minute and a half, I think it was maybe not even two of the world championships. You got Chelsea Cesaro, the the women's Ironman world champion, married, eighteen months post, you know, post. I mean, like, if it spe- it's it's should speak to all age groupers that you know the, anything is anything is possible if you're willing to put the work in and, and make the time for it. You know, it can't be oh well, they're they're professionals. Of course they are, but a lot of them still have things to do just like we do. You know, and I think it's just it's a you know, our topic for today was kind of going to be talk about, you know, train so you can train like you need to train for next year. You know, we use that phrase a lot, you know, and again, it's like train so you can train like you need to train to get ready to race. You know, it's not just, you know, start out of the gates and do the same thing, you know, up until race day, especially when you're looking at you know from this year, next year. But for a lot of people, next year is it started, you know, the calendar hasn't turned. It's still 2022, but the, the calendar is it, it's for you. It's, it's done. It's looking on to the next season. And, there's a lot of things you can do right now to benefit yourself. And, and I think one of the, one of the main things, and we talked about this last week a lot, you and I just kind of off, off the air was I think people, again, the word selfish has this like negative connotation towards it. Like you, you you're, you're selfish, you know, you, you're, you're, that's a negative thing. You all, you're self-centered, but a lot of times we're figuring out, especially as a coach, and I, and I have to tell at least one athlete this every single day, is, hey, it, it's, and I said, I think five times yesterday, kind of looking through the last week or the weekend of training peaks for athletes, was like, listen, your life seems incredibly stressful. It looks stressful personally. It looks stressful professionally. In fact, just reading your athlete check-in makes me break out in hives because it stresses me out. <laughs> but don't, because all you see is red. 
right? And and mm-hmm. that happens. Like you know, we all struggle with time management and boundaries and, and saying no. And this is like the the world we live in now is we say yes to everything. You know, we got to be doing something or doing this or doing that. And it's like if you're gonna say yes to anything, say yes to yourself. Say yes to time for yourself. You know, you ha- you have that phrase like you know. Uh, in order to really take care of the people, you got to take care of yourself. You know, you're you're on you're on an airplane, from what I hear, and they say you know the drops <laughs> when the mask drops, put up put it on yourself first before you put it on someone next to you. And taking care of yourself and making time for yourself isn't selfish. It's not putting yourself above everyone else. What it's doing is is putting you in a better position to serve people and be helpful more effectively. Because you can't do that running on fumes, you can't do that letting your health decline, and you can't and you can't um, you can't do that. Honestly, like you see people kind of fall into depression or anxiety as they as they put all their focus and all their energy towards other people, and they forget about themselves. And then what's left? Other people, you know, other people move on. Other things succeed. People get better. People, you know, get out of funks. And what are you left with? Nothing, because you emptied your tank to fill everybody else up, and now you're left with nothing. First of all, thank you for that recap on St. George. I, I didn't get a chance to uh, watch that. <clears throat> but I think what what you're saying about being selfish, and I think I'll, it's like, what do you do to dive into what that means? And, um, you know, I, I was writing this morning a little bit, and I was kind of t- on this, like, follow your bliss, follow your bliss thing, kind of like that. And I was wondering, you know, yesterday I didn't really feel like, was it Monday? I didn't really feel like doing a workout in the morning and I was just like, I'm not going to do this. And then somehow I ended up near the gym and I'm like, I bet I'm just going to pull in. And then I jumped in <clears throat> and swam, but I swam for like a thousand, right? I'm like, I just got in and mm-hmm. got out. And then when I got done, I was like, I really kind of like that. And it's always that thing about, yeah, I could go more, but I always, I got out and I left it and I wasn't going to do anything. And then as I was leaving the gym, I was like, I felt, felt really good. I really like that. That that was good for me as a person and my soul and whatever. And I remember I was, then I was going back to this little office I got, which, by the way, I was also thinking about, oddly enough, I kind of forgot it was Halloween. <laughs> I knew it was around this weekend, but I didn't realize it was yesterday. And I got back to the office and they had a, you know, like those bar top, you know, island things just mm-hmm. full of cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and candy bars and all that. And I was like in the mood to not, you know, I've, the last few days I said, I'm going to, and without Halloween in mind, I was thinking I'm going to cut back on the sugar. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I was like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, you know, they catered in all these uh, local bakery thing, you know, whatever. And I, I avoided it. But the point of the whole story was I also wasn't going to do anything yesterday. And then I did the little swim, which felt awesome. And it was, you know, as you talk about, for me, it was just like be in the ballpark, you know, just kind of hang around. And, but then I got this urge to run. I was like, man, I feel like running. I really feel like it rather than I got to go run, you know? So I'm just trying to shift that mindset as into how can I look forward to tomorrow again? You know, that's my sort of main mantra is like, what gets you looking forward to tomorrow? And then I was like, I didn't do a run, but cause I was like, don't overdo it because that's your natural tendency. Just really be stoked about it. And now I, I haven't done it yet, but I really feel like, um, getting on the bike today now, all all of a sudden. So when you say, you know, be selfish, I think that's kind of what it is. It's sort of like create things that you want to do and you really look forward to and lean into them and then let them go. But just instead of, you know, the, the schedule can be dawning. And you mentioned like sometimes things get, you know, there'll be weeks where they get red, you know, but uh, this is the time of year to be okay with that. And, <clears throat> but just find what's going to make you feel good. And, you know, there's a lot of people that come in that have that are coming back now, right? <clears throat> they had a bad year. They had a lot of things getting away. Life got in the way. They didn't really train that much. What now they want to come back and they're excited and they, they're ready to do an Ironman next year. And one of my biggest things is like, uh, all right, that doesn't mean we're going to start, you know, quote unquote Ironman blocks right now. We just got to find a groove and we got to find something that feels good to you and, and helps you follow your bliss. Because to me that, I mean, that's, that was one of the things I was writing about in general is like following your bliss in life. And, you know, for me, a lot of times that's very daunting and confusing, but 
I, I, it's there if you, you know, if you, if you just kind of clear space in your head and just decide, Hey, you know, this makes me happy and just start doing little more, more little things like that and just create kind of like a snowballing effect. And I don't know, man, it, it can get challenging right now. I feel like, I feel like, cause I can almost feel the snow falling and you know, how's it going to even get easier? But I think it's just finding those little pockets of fun and, and enjoyment in the daily. There's, there's so much for all of us to do or feel like we have to do each and every day. And and this, listen, this is, this is from a guy who, you know, started coaching full time, you know, like six, seven years ago. And and I'm just like, maybe in the last year or two, like actually figured out how to set like boundaries. And sometimes I still suck at them. Like, you know, this isn't coming from a guy with perfect time management or, 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 you know, professional, personal boundaries in terms of, you know, um, you know, prof- you know, just doing things when you should do them and just letting them go when you shouldn't. But, you know, from the time you wake up, you, you feel the need to do this, 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 and this, and this, because it's, it's like you honestly wake up and you immediately, some days I wake up and I immediately feel rushed. And this is from a guy who's up at, at five. Yeah. You know, I got plenty of time but you feel rushed because you feel like you've got all this stuff to do. And then the first, so the first thing you do for, for a lot of people, and that's the way I, I used to be. And sometimes I fall back in this is all right. I need to get ahead and getting ahead of the day means to me, let me go ahead and do things for other people. And then by the time, you know, two, cause, cause I try to, and, and again, it's really hard as a, as a, as a parent and, and I'm, and I'm fi- like, it's a different transition for me, I, especially as a, as a father, who really likes to spend time with their son and like invest in him and be around is that he, I love doing that and I want to be there, but also at the same time, he's getting to that age to where, you know, he doesn't want to do things with me all the time. He wants to play with his friends, you know, which is great. I'm all for it, but it's, it's a transition, you know? And so I like, I'll shift my schedule in the day to be done at, at three 45 so I can, I can be ready and available for him right when he gets home. And then some days, as soon as he walks in the door, he grabs a snack and then he's gone. He's like, peace out. See you later. And I'm like, mm. okay, well, I got, I got, I got all this. Wait, what? Then like, what do you do? I rush through the day, right? Cause you, you, again, you put all these things, but that, then your schedule's out of whack. You're super tired. You're like, oh, well, I guess I, sh- I should have done this. So now what I've been trying to do is really start out my day, no matter what, by doing something for myself. Even if it's 30 minutes, honestly, even if it's just a walk with, with waffles, our dog is like, listen, take a 30, 40 minute walk, put on a podcast, listen to somebody, you know, not, that's not junk, but something that, you know, I can get, get value from because honestly, even a walk is doing something for yourself, especially if you, you get done feeling refreshed, you, you, you get your dog some exercise, you get out in the cold, you feel kind of alive. Maybe you learn something new or it made you think in a different direction, which is also a good thing. But making time for yourself, right? Because, you know, I, I read this quote from an athlete this morning. It was like, man, I, I really had to fight the resistance this morning. Mm-hmm. The resistance to of life pulling at you from the time you wake up. Because what it does is life and its responsibilities and its anxiety. I mean, essentially, if you wake up every day and you open up the news app, figure it out. Like you, you can't do a worse <laughs> thing yeah. for yourself. Then the, the, on, period one, just open up a news app period on your phone at all 24 hours a day. But the first thing you do when you wake up to scroll through social media or to scroll through, uh, uh you know, a quote unquote news feed, could you start the day any worse, right? Start off the day with a win 30 minutes for yourself. And, and, and again, going back to like trains, so you can train like you need to train is just because you signed up for a race or want to do a race doesn't mean you're ready to train for it. If you haven't trained in a while, what you need to do is commit to exercising frequently. That's it. Exercise frequently before you can effectively train because training is specific. Training includes intensity distribution. It, it includes you know volume going up, volume going down. It includes managing uh, load, managing stress, doing things on specific days. That's a lot to handle. So if you haven't done that, d- don't jump into quote unquote, I th- I'm, I'm ready to train for this. Mm-hmm. Well, you haven't in the last six months, you can't even prove that you're ready to exercise consistently. Do that first because health and fitness and wellness, that is your number one goal is to feel really, really, really good for as long as possible. 
so you can do things as long as possible, right? And it, that's just, that's the thing. And most people just want to skip right to it or cut corners and do things in a, in a different route. But that's what you've got to do. And then step into the training, right? Get ready to train, you know. And then again, start with the aerobic work that, you know, you've always talked about. And again, like one of the very first podcasts we ever did was like 90% of training, maybe even if not more than that, should make you feel good when you're done. Mm -hmm. Should make you feel better, mm -hmm. more alive, right? And going back to like putting time for yourself this next year and choosing to be selfish with your own time and your own health and your own wellness and your own, you know, mental and emotional fitness is, you know, making that time for yourself to feel alive, to feel better, to do aerobic work. Cause again, like this is, this is the goal, right? And especially if like, if you have kids is, you know, to be around and maybe do something with them, you know, every parent that we've ever had that's, that's done a race with their kid, they, they say it's, it's the, it's the thing they'll never forget. They'll never forget. And they could care less about that time. It's like doing an event, a 5K, a marathon, riding their bike with their kid down the street, just doing something active and, and with your kid is it means the world to them. But you can't do that if you're, you know, sedentary and obese and let yourself go. But you, you've you taken care of everybody else, quote unquote. Well, not taking care of yourself, but how, but how is that taking care of, you know, everyone else? You can't you can't have it both ways. And And I think, again, like – it's always easier to try to take care of other people than it is to take care of yourself. I mean, the hardest work you can do in life is on yourself, right? And that, that goes with like, you know, thick therapy and your own fitness. It's hard, right? It's always easier to, to help someone else, right? Cause it kind of fills our cup, but at the same time, it also drains it. And so this is a, a great time here, especially like going into the holidays where, you know, it, that brings up a whole lot of, you know, brings up a whole open to a whole can of worms for a lot of people when they got to, you know, hang out with family members and not, you know, maybe fans up, they got to travel a lot, you know, they, they can maybe let themselves go and use as an excuse, you know, put yourself first. There's nothing selfish about going for a 30 minute run. And the, and the truth of the matter is the people that want to make you feel guilty about that, they, they don't think you're being selfish. They're mad that you're choosing to make self for your and make time for yourself and create a better lifestyle for yourself, and they can't make that choice. Yeah, that's what they're really telling you. And that's and again, that's a hard thing to wrap our brains around is is being and, and again like they have always said that about I don't necessarily agree with it to the to the fullest extent, but they've always said you know being an AA is a, it's a selfish program. You know you do do it for yourself because if you don't do it for yourself. You know, when you first got sober, you know, my, my therapist was like, you can't do this for anybody else. You can't do it for, you know, your parents. You can't do it for Ali. You can't do it for anybody else but yourself. Because because what if those people leave? What if something happens to those people? You know, then then what? Then your reason for doing this is gone. Then are you going to keep doing it? Maybe Probably not. But if you do it for yourself, then you'll get all these things that you want in the future. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there is, there is a benefit to doing things selfishly because listen, no one's ever done a workout and then got finished and been like, man, I feel worse today. I'm just not where I need to be mentally. Everybody feels better always. But the hardest thing to do almost for every workout is just putting on your shoes. Right. Like you said, like get in the water for a thousand. Right. And then you're like, well, now it's, it's contagious. Right. There is the daily resistance you feel lessens. And then it becomes more of a, not a resistance, but it becomes more of a, you know, your body craves doing something for itself in the morning, not looking at your phone, going for a run, getting on your bike, heading to the pool, you know, going out for a hike, reading a book, meditating, that becomes your new normal. Instead of feeling that resistance and pressure every day when you wake up to meet all these responsibilities for everyone else while putting yourself on the sidelines. Yeah, I love what you said about your body starts to crave doing something good for itself. And I think what you're talking about, that quote I um, was talking about way back in the day is that exercise is supposed to give you energy, not take it away. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the fine line that we all walk. Um, and, you know, it, when I, the other thing I was doing when I was writing this morning, I, I, I posed an interesting question for myself. I said, I wonder what would happen if social media just went away. What would we do? You know, it's just a weird thing to think about, right? You know, like before it, I, I can vaguely remember before it. It's been so long since it's been around. But what you said about the news feeds and the opening the right away in the morning, 
that immediately, at least for me, I'm just speaking for myself, but man, if I do that kind of stuff, my brain goes crazy. Like it, it goes because, you know, I've always felt that way sort of about computers in general and especially um, because I spent a lot of time in, in the creative world with, you know, endless folders of new ideas and shit like that. And then the next thing you know, you click on something and it reminds you of something else. And then you go over there and look at that. And then by, you know, a half hour later, you can't even remember what you're doing, but your brain is already so activated and, and just overcharged with mindless kind of <laughs> endeavors that it, it really does sap your energy. And I've talked about before when I lost my phone, but three days after that, I had, didn't have a phone for three days. And I was just like, fired up about doing the most mundane shit. And mm-hmm. I remember that such a vividly. lesson. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Like I can't, I like was so, I was out in my backyard, like trimming all these trees and washing, you know, um, throw rugs and <laughs> like, you know, it made no sense. I remember looking up and going, what am I doing right now? Cause it mm-hmm. was n- stuff that I always had in the back of my mind, but I never got to. And I found that mm-hmm. really interesting. What you said about, how you got want to get all your shit done and then, you know, so you're ready for Hayden when he comes home and then he doesn't want to hang out because he wants to hang with friends or whatever. And then I'm like, oh, because I thought that yesterday. I was at the office at, at four. I'm like, get, let's get all this done and then I can go home. And then I was like, now what am I going to do? <laughs> you know, so I wonder if you had that thought. You're kind of like, wait, I'm done with everything. I've got all this free time now. But, you know, that's when I started thinking, uh, You know, we all have these things we want to do, um, whether they're, you know, just around the house or our dreams or passions or whatever. And those are the things that kind of take the back seat a lot, you know. Um, And how do you sort of light the spark for that? And I think training can be a perfect example of that. Like, you know, realistically, I probably, you know, I came home yesterday at four and then I was got home and I'm like, hmm. I'm here now and I'm free, but I really don't have a, anything I want to do. So I ended up doing nothing really, you know, for a while. And, but if you can somehow, you know, and with that thousand swim yesterday, it didn't do anything that really, as far as knocking me down, it just felt good. I got out and went home, did a little sauna first, got home later. And I, I probably should have just, you know, spun out the bike or something, but like, cause I wanted to, but like you said, man, putting the shoes on is the hardest part or finding the old Lycra shorts or wherever the hell they, where, wherever the hell they went after my uh, race, you know, I have been on, I think once since Ironman. So there you go. But it's like, what am I doing? You kind of think you're going to do something and then you never really get to it because it's sort of like this ethereal dream that you have that's sitting out there. It's it's funny to to like really think about how easily we are all influenced, mm-hmm. and, and an argument can be made that if the first thing you do when you wake up is not something for yourself and it's working or it's you know it's looking at the news or or even opening up your, your social media feed, the day is no longer yours. You've given it away mm-hmm. because, like you said, your thoughts and your feelings now go in these directions that aren't genuinely and organically fueled by what you're feeling inside. You've been influenced in some way, shape, or form, right? By what you've read, by a news article, by a by by whatever. You've immediately been changed, and I mean that might seem like deep and drastic, but it's true because. You know, it, it, people do it all the time. Like, it, let me give pr- a, a perfect example for triathletes to, to mention. You know, you're you're going about your day. You know, you wake up in the morning and you open your face and, and your buddy, you know, that you kind of like but kind of don't like, sign up for Ironman California next year. You weren't even thinking about it. Wasn't even on your radar. You've already committed to not doing one because it's it's irresponsible and it doesn't fit in your life. And you don't want to. You haven't done it in five years. But then you're the next one is well, maybe I should do Ironman California. Mm -hmm. It's not your thought. It's your buddies. But he just owned your thoughts enough to change the, to change your, your, your thought pattern. And then your whole day is, Oh, can I make this work? And you're like, wait, whose idea was this? Right. Who's telling me to do these things? 
So then, so the first thing you do again, if you're if you're influenced to do other things for other people, and you're not you're making that commitment. You're also to not not to yourself. You're selling yourself short and because again, like going back to making your body crave good things for itself. It's the same thing goes, you know, for like the if you're if you're trying to wean yourself off sweets, the longer you don't have sweets, the less you crave it, mm-hmm. right? But then you have one, you're like, ah, oh, back on it again. Like your body and your mind, and you, like, it all craves good things for itself, right? It, it, working out, you know, going for walks, meditating, yoga, running, riding, swimming, all these things, being around positive people, right? Having good converse, it craves that stuff. But the more you neglect it and you kind of fall back into your hole and your patterns of not taking time, well, life's too busy or life's do that. And then I can't do this. Like, yes, you can. You make, you can make 30 minutes because if you think you can make 30 minutes a day, you're doing three and a half hours a week. I can, I can do three and a half hours a week. And then once you find time to make three and a half hours a week for yourself, I can make four hours. Of, like, I can I can add a little bit to that. I can add, you know, just under five minutes a day. I can do that. Next thing you know, you're four, five hours, six, or seven hours, and you built it into your day, and it doesn't seem so horrible. It doesn't seem so, you know, uh, stressful. It's just become – you've become your priority. And, and most people just – we 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 make ourselves the uh, – we make ourselves not a priority. You know, then you have this, and there's the the phrase, you know, mom guilt or dad guilt that we're we're doing things for ourselves, and, and you know, and we should be spending more times for you know with our kids, and it's a really hard thing to manage. I mean, I ask myself this question all the time. You know, am I rearranging my schedule for Hayden in certain ways, and he couldn't give less of a shit, right? He he doesn't have any idea mm-hmm. that I'm doing. You know, kind of like yesterday, for example, like I said, like I was on the bike ride, he was getting his haircut, I got, and then like twenty minutes left. You know, Allie was like, "Hey, he wants to know if you want to throw if you want to throw football when you get home." And I was like, "Yeah." Um, and he gets home, and I said, "Of course." You know, and then he, I get uh, out from the bike, shower, and come downstairs. And I'm like, "Where's Hayden?" And she's like, "Oh, he's across the street playing with the buddies." And I was like, <laughs> "Okay." I, mean, I, was, I was like, "But I was fine with it." Then, then I was like, "Well, shit, what am I what am I gonna do now?" Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also this thing like, <laughs> I, but then when we Uncle have those Rico. moments, what's that? Uncle Rico, you're out throwing the ball by yourself. <laughs> exactly. You know, but it is like, it's a fine line. But then I also remember like, is I had this conversation with him yesterday he had played outside all day long because they didn't have any school on Halloween. Like what the hell? And <laughs> he was, he had played so hard all day long. He was having a, we were having a rough moment. And I said, listen, man, I said, I said, you're tired when you're hungry or you're tired. That's the only times, you know, you whine and cry about stuff like this. It doesn't matter. And I was like, and I understand that because when I'm tired and I'm hungry, I'm not a very good parent, right? I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm more impatient. I'm more irritable. Things that you do set me off. So it's like, it's not just you. It's, it's everyone does it. And so that also got me thinking, I was like, well, that's all like, that goes back to like taking care of yourself, right? Eating right, taking, you know, time for yourself. Cause I, I'm a, always a better parent when I'm done exercising always mm. because as especially as, and again, it go, even if you're not a parent, you do this probably with work or, or, you know, your, your pets or your, you know, in-laws or your family or whatever it is like doing something for, if you always feel like everything and everyone is pulling and tugging at you, then you always feel like you're behind. You always feel like you're giving, you never feel like you're filling, you write yourself up with good things and do, you know, eating well or sleeping in or doing whatever. If I'm done with the workout, I'm always a better parent because I know I just did something for myself, only me. And then I'm always better. I can always be a better parent when I've done something for myself first. And I think that's a fact with a lot of parents and, and a lot of people in general, it, because then you're like, God, I, I'm already one up. I've already won the day. I did something for me. The rest can just happen as it is. And I'm but you're also better at it. I'm a, I'm a better you know, I'm a better coach, I think, when I'm when I'm active in, in training. You know, I think because at some point you can only give so much, right? And also I think your your glass tends to shrink, right? You know, talk about, you know, filling your cup or your cup rather. Talk about what fills your cup and what empties your cup. You know, like you're, you're in you know, rela- negative relationships or you're helping out a family, you're helping out this, you have poor boundaries, you're always giving, giving, giving. You're saying yes, you're saying yes, you're enabling people. You're, you know, you're not working out, but you're making time for this. You never feel appreciated. Well, not only are you not filling your cup, but you might have started out with like a, a sh- you know, a, a gallon jug, but after a few months, that turns into a shot glass. So what you're giving 
starts to recede, right? It starts to, it starts to shrink. So you might feel like you're giving, but it's not that much because you, you've been so jaded, you're so exhausted, you're so stressed. You can't do anything, right? But the other direction, the more you fill your cup, you fill it continuously you know, with, with, with things that you know make you feel good, by good conversation with people, by being positive, by you know working out for yourself or taking a walk or, or saying no to things that you always said yes to, right? Well, once you start to fill yourself up consistently and then you do it more, well, guess what? Your cup gets bigger. You can do more of it. And then if you do need to empty it, you know, going back to like feeling better after you train, you can empty it during your kids or your spouse or your work or, or a friend. And then guess what? It doesn't feel like that much has been gone, right? Because you, you've you created this, this much bigger glass of fulfillment that giving up a pint or two feels like nothing versus owning that shot glass of life where you've just given and given and given and given where, you know, two sips feels like you're done. And, and you really didn't do a lot. You know, it just, it all comes back to building ourselves positively, right? Building ourselves up emotionally and mentally, positive self-talk, things we can do, creating good habits, exercising, meditating, you know, whatever it is, listening to things that are good, you know, that's what builds us up. That's what makes us more resilient, not by doing, you know, stressful and, you know, irresponsible and negative things. It doesn't make you resilient. It makes you weak. Right? And when you're weak, you can't fend off things. And so there's just a lot we could do. And it, and it doesn't all start with training. It starts with making a decision, right? It makes it making a decision with yourself that I'm going to put myself first this year. I'm going to commit to myself this year. It doesn't mean I'm selfish. It doesn't mean I'm self-centered, right? It doesn't mean I'm not, I can't do the things that I want to do. In fact, what it actually does is it's going to enable me to do more. Right. Right. And, and do better. Like you hear that from, you know, the, you know, the, it, it, famous people that are really well off, thinking about you know, making money. The more money I make, the more good I can do for the people, right? And, and that that's the same. When I I heard this phrase over the weekend, listen to a podcast called called uh, creating and um, accruing human capital, interactions with people, doing things for yourself instead of accruing and trying to you know accumulate um, assets. You know, cars, boats, real estate, whatever things that don't have much meaning to us, but that we just want and to to to, to get it. It was it was more talking about creating more human capital with people, in 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 relationships and 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 interactions. You know, that are positive and how you can impact people. Like that's the stuff we should focus on, and that doesn't come from not investing in yourself, right? It, because that's how you cultivate and create that, that kind of, that kind of life that you want, not by putting everyone first 24 mm. seven. Well, you, you said it, man, about how after you exercise or work out, you're a better parent, better coach, you feel better. I mean, that's, I think that's very universal. I feel that as well. I feel like I'm a better friend, whatever, and coach. And I, and you know, like after a workout that swim yesterday, uh, I just, you, you feel more about reaching out when you feel good, right? It's all about getting, for me, it's all about getting oxygen and blood in the brain and, and just kind of functioning as a, as a more, I guess, uh, just being a better human and, and activating what that means. And, and I think about that in terms of like, if I, I know I'm in trouble um, in the morning if, like I said, I, if I get on social media or if I start scrolling around and look, reading crap or whatever, because that's just a, we talked about it many times, but like the sort of that dopamine cycle, it's, it's kind of a false, um, injection into your brain that peaks you up for a little, it's like sugar or whatever. And if you're reaching for sugar or I always say caffeine, like just like to a, you know, how you, I'm sure you wake up some days and uh, you don't like immediately like feel like, Oh my God, I need to get coffee. If you have that feeling, that's when I know I'm in trouble. Mm. Um, but if I kind of like do a few things and then I'm like, I'm going to make some coffee, that's a good thing. Right. And I was talking to an athlete this morning about sugar a little bit and how I kind of, at least in theory, have a philosophy that I think it's okay to have a little sugar, you know, or whatever after your workouts, you know, it's sort mm. of like, I feel like your body is more prepared to handle it at that point, if that makes sense. That that's just my theory. And, um, and it doesn't, it doesn't have such a dramatic impact. Right. And we think about, you know, going in the holidays and, 
you know, some people get sick around the holidays and everything. And I think it's just like overloading your body with crap. And your body's just like, wait a minute, we got to get some of this out of here, man. You just, you sit around all Thanksgiving or Christmas and all these holiday parties and you're drinking and eating and going crazy. And then you wonder why you're sluggish. It's really about the body's just trying to get rid of that shit, you know? And, and when you're talking about, you know, being selfish or self love or whatever, it's kind of like, being able to draw that line is, is a simple thing that might keep you in the, the training groove the next day rather than being, you know, couch bound for about four days in a row watching football games and stuff like that. And, um, I, I know, I mean, I've, I've been there, I get it. And I just think that's what it is. And, and so many times it's, it's a weird thing because it's a twisted selfishness. Like, yeah, I'm just going to have one more cook. I mean, I, I deserve that. And then you just start going down that train and then you wonder why you don't have any energy is because your body is trying to digest and get rid of all that crap all the time. So it is, it's, it's just so interesting to think about how to stay on the right track with stuff like that. But I like what you also said about, you know, just exercise 30 minutes a day. Don't be thinking about training right now. Just kind of get out and get your flow and, and and start building good patterns or keep you know keep patterns in the ballpark because that's the way to just sort of create and and it's like anything else you know if you try to jump into um iron man training when you're not ready for it it's just it's not going to be fun you know and that's why i think the thing about train to train like you need to train is so important right now is because we all get into this late year cycle where we kind of drop the ball and everything goes to hell and everything like that. And then you just want to pick it up so quick. And then by the middle of the season, you're like, damn it. I feel exactly like I did last year. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's, you know, because it's just this endless loop of kind of neglecting yourself uh, earlier in the year. Every time you see somebody outside doing something, taking a walk with a friend, kids, the playground running, whether it's a six minute mile or, you know, a 14 minute mile riding their bike, you know, on their e-bike or their, you know, road bike slamming it, you know, at their pool where they're aqua jogging or they're, you know, and you're, they're annoying, you're, they're annoying you because you can't get in the lane because they're aqua jogging. Every time you see somebody doing that, you should smile because the world's a better place. If everybody exercised and took care of themselves, the world would be a better place. 100%, without a shadow of a doubt, and you can't argue with it. If everyone took time for themselves each and every day, so when you see that, you should be happy that people are making that time because we're all better people. And if we're all better people, when we train and when we exercise and make time for ourselves, then that creates a better planet in general, right? Seriously, like if everybody, if you want to solve 80% of the world's problems, then everyone goes to therapy twice a month and everyone exercises 30 minutes a day. I just solved all of humanity basically in 45 in, in 30 seconds. Mm. Like that would change everyone, right? It would change because it does it. The, you don't have a lot to go around. Like when you hear that phrase, like I don't have much to give right now. That's because all you're doing is giving. You're not taking right. Taking time for yourself is therapy. Taking time for yourself is sleeping, Right. Again, like a huge thing that people just totally neglect. Taking time for yourself is going to bed on time and waking up after you've gotten seven, eight hours of sleep, not getting four, All right? Mindlessly watching YouTube videos till 11 o'clock at night isn't taking time for yourself. It's room, it's, especially if you can't sleep until 10, right? Like yeah. make, make time for Damn yourself by doing that. Making time for yourself is, is, is making good food choices that make you feel good, not that dragging them make you feel like crap, Right. You have more to give when you've built yourself up in a positive manner that's healthy. It makes you better all around. It makes you better all around. And as long as you can keep that a good positive perspective of why you're doing this in the first place, to be able to be to be able to live long enough, right? Like to do these things and take care of yourself, like it's not selfish. And, the, and again, the people that give you a hard time about – not having a dessert or, or not having this or, you know, oh, you, you know, I feel bad. you're just healthy. I'm like, yeah, and you're just not. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. don't, 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 you know, scoff at me. Like, you know, that that's, your, we all make our own choices, right? And if your choice is to take care of yourself, then good for you, right? 
be, be happy. You don't want to saddle your family with, you know, health bills for the rest of your life because you chose not to take care of yourself. Like there's just so much we could do. That's honestly so easy. It's so easy to move. It is so easy to move. And the argument that there's no time without when the, over the course of the day is just false. You all have time to make. We all can make time, right? We can all make time to do something for ourselves each day. And you, you have to do it. Whether Again, even if it's just put your phone away and read for 30 minutes, you know, lose yourself in that. Because like you said before, as soon as you open up your phone or do something else or open up your emails, you're no longer – and again, you have to do that at some point. I get it. Believe me, I 100% get it. But – when you do things for yourself first and you make yourself a priority, like everything else seems to come easier, right? Like you said, like better friend, better, better coach, better, like you're, you're, you're more willing to help because you've already filled up. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm already ahead. I'm already won. I took, I, I did some myself today and I got it. Right. And so like, again, like going in, and cause honestly, and this is the hardest time of the year to make these decisions. Right. But you also have a, a lot of people have a lot more free time. Right. You got you're not working as much, maybe because Thanksgiving, then you got Christmas and New Year's, which is also the time of year where, again, like you said, I, I honestly think seasonal depression is, is not just because of um, the darkness and the cold, but of, of the compact nature of the holidays. Right. With. Like you said, it's just it's commonplace. We're gonna eat like shit. We're gonna drink like shit. We gotta hang out with family, and that's what that's what's gonna make us feel good to start the year with a with a bang. What? No, <laughs> right? It's like then you got stressed for buying presents for people and going here and going here and, and figuring this schedule out. It's like people are just a ball of stress. And how do they manage it? Not by exercising, but by drinking excessively and eating excessively. And you wonder why people come out of that feeling like crap. Do you feel like that's going to make you more likely to and, – and you wonder – because, again, you wonder why New Year's resolutions fail. A, because a lot of people you know overhype them and have these like ridiculous expectations starting January 1st. I don't believe it's so much about unrealistic expectations as it is about the timing. You're, what, you, what most people do is they're, they're coming off uh, November, December – where you've maybe eaten, you haven't fueled your body well with, you know, fuel and, and food or alcohol. You haven't exercised as much because you're like, hey, it's just going out the window anyway. I'll start over in January. So what you do is you come to the start line of 2023 at your absolute weakest. <laughs> yep. At your absolute weakest, at your absolute probably heaviest, at your absolute, you know, probably um, most, most, you know, it's all relative, most depressed, anxious because listen, it, most of us don't want to sit down with a lot of our family and listen to what they have to say over Christmas or Thanksgiving. Like, because we all have different views or forever. It's just ex- anxiety driven for a lot of people. So you you wake up on January first, ready to tackle this brand new year with these new resolutions and new year, new you. And the one that's and the one that's uh, that's going to start, they're going to put on its shoes. A start line is the weakest version of yourself that it has been the last six months. Mm. So yeah. don't do that this year. Start right now building yourself up. And when you wake up January 1st, be like, dude, I am ready to rock. I've already got a good lather going. I'm just all stretched out. I got a good base level of fitness. You know, and then also most importantly, you know, set realistic um, you know, goals or, or journeys to go on for the for the year and then be ready to go. But again, it's like <laughs> you can't wake up on January first and expect, you know, to be a superstar next year if you if you're coming off the bench, you know, as a fifth stringer, you know, like you, you gotta be ready to play. And so now right now, get ready to play and and not not ride the pine, but get ready to play. Yeah. I mean, think about that, man. You got, because the good thing about, we always look at January 1st as sort of this rebirth or something like that. And in a, in a way it is, it's kind of like, holy shit, got that out of the way. The, the holiday, the family stuff. And like you're saying, the stresses and now the complications of what everybody's fighting for and all that kind of shit. And I just think we spend so much time over those times, you know, numbing ourselves down, you know, just to kind of escape from it. And then, but imagine if you could actually start January 1st in a, in a place where you're like, damn, now I, that is a clear, you know, it's like clear water out there after the new year's Eve celebration. It's like mm-hmm. kind of have a few football games still lingering around, but for the most part, you can kind of take yourself back. It feels like, yeah. you know, 
And to be in a spot where you can actually go about that, you know, and that's what train to train, like you need to train is all about. And it just sounds a lot more exciting actually than to start the day or the new year at your weakest point. That's kind of a, but you're so right about that. You know, it's, it, it's just, it's just fascinating, right? That we, cause I do, I think the new year is so overrated because <laughs> What happens is we're all like this. Like it's just a a grandiose, more, you know, amplified version of I'm gonna wait till Monday. <laughs> you yeah. know, like every triathlete, you miss Monday, Tuesday, you're like, you know what? I'll start, I'll start next Monday. And the next five days you regress. So you not only do you regress, but you become a less fit, less motivated version of yourself that's now ready to tackle the next week. And so when November 1st and you've and you've had this. You're like, you know, hey, um, you know, what, what I think is, hey, it's November 1st. I got Thanksgiving, got the holidays, kids are stuff out, you know. Um, I'll wait till January 1st. I'm going to let myself get so unfit. And so and I, we're not, listen, we're not here. We're not sitting here talking about starting off to, today, November 1st, like gangbusters and, 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 and starting to peak. But start to train or exercise. And most importantly, Start to take time and commit to yourself. That's just important, and I think it's one of the things that get that's get that gets lost. And 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 I think you know we can end it on this one, but not only to take just time for yourself, but make it meaningful, right? Like it, don't make it self degrading or self criticizing by you know getting on your your bike and expecting to do this or expecting to do that. Every time I jump in the pool, every time I lace up my shoes around, every time I get on the bike, I don't have an expectation of of a pace, of a watt, or of a of a yardage, you know, outcome. I just want to do it and then have fun doing it, enjoy myself doing, it, enjoy doing it. Because then when I get done, I've already won. It's it's a it's a, it's an ultimate win as long as I as long as I finish or do enough to where I feel good about it. That's it. It's a win. You don't have to be disappointed. And that is also a skill that so many people need to learn is, and you can, you can learn to love yourself through training. And and that might be a little emo for most of you, but it's a fact, you know, you, we learn more about ourselves through training than almost anything else in life, right? Cause you have these conversations in your head or you want to, you want to push or you want to quit or you feel positive or you feel negative. Like there's a lot to learn. We're always learning. So don't take two months off to unlearn things to become un, you know, not, not we all need to come unfit to to get really really fit. But the, the point is 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 to continue to keep um, a routine, right? And, and to get ready and establish like that's like the, I think when I created like that eight week prep plan for the uh, the people who do the twenty twenty three race big wins, the the first thing like comments I have in the, on the first day is like, listen, this is this is to this isn't to you know make you a better athlete in eight weeks. This is to establish routine establish a pattern, right? Establish a level of commitment and expectation, none of, of pieces, but what you expect from yourself to do each day, not to crush yourself, but I'm making time for myself today. I want to make time for myself to swim on Mondays. I'm going to make time for myself to bike on Tuesdays. And none of that is wrong. And none of that is bad. It's just about establishing a pattern and a routine that is predictable, right? Because predictable patterns have a much better shot of being executed uh, successfully than randomness, right? Um, it, it's just it's just important. And again, it's a great time of year to do it. Most importantly, not just for your fitness, but for your mental health and emotional health as we as we kind of roll into, again, what, what is a great time of year, but also a challenging time of year for for a lot of people. Again, the holidays bring up a lot of different emotions for a, a lot of different reasons, both good and bad. Um, and so, you know, again, put yourself first. Um, and we love you guys. Yeah. We appreciate you. Uh, as always, go to our website, c26triathlon.com. It's our one-stop shop for all things coaching, camps, and community. Uh, again, we have the link to our new 2023 uh, racing plans on the front page, and then you can click on the training tab click on those. If you have questions, email c26operations at gmail.com. We'll have it on the website soon, uh, but we'll link to it in the show notes as our Ironman Wisconsin and Wisconsin 70.3 training camp. That is next year. It's already 50% full. Uh, the majority of our camps sell out. So uh, hop on that and click to sign up. And as always, if you need anything from Mike, he's available, crushingiron at gmail.com. Or if you need anything from me specifically, I'm at c26coach at 
gmail.com. All right, buddy. All right, dude. I will Go make time for yourself. Yeah, man. Let's bank some uh, resist or bank some toughness for the holidays. Starting now. Let's do it. All right. See you. See you.